Hi friends, this is Dr. Sandeep from World Surgery Forum. In this video, we will be discussing about the blood-brain barrier, what is a neurovascular unit, then what are the functions of blood-brain barrier, and then we will be going through the anatomy of the blood-brain barrier along with its cellular components, then we will be going through the physiology of the blood-brain barrier, and then what are the various circumventricular organs. So what is the blood brain barrier? To maintain normal brain function, the neural environment must be preserved within a narrow homeostatic range. This requires a tight regulation of transportation of cells, molecules and ions between the blood and the brain. Such a tight regulation is maintained by unique anatomical and physiological barrier called as the blood brain barrier so that's how you define the blood brain barrier next we'll understand what is a neurovascular unit so the term blood brain barrier it does not adequately encompass the wide range of morphological features and the functional characteristics for this reason the term neurovascular unit was coined by new in 2004 which is being used increasingly nowadays and what does neurovascular unit constitutes of? It has got endothelial cells, parasites, the microglia, then you have astrocytes, the basement membrane and the tight junctions along the endothelial cells. Next we will be understanding about the various functions of the blood brain barrier. So it has two main functions that is the barrier function and the carrier function. In the barrier function, we have paracellular barrier in which the endothelial tight junction restrict the free movement of the water soluble molecules. What is the transcellular barrier? So the endothelial cells of the blood brain barrier have a low level of endocytosis and transcytosis. So they do not allow unnecessary molecules to enter the brain then we have enzymatic barrier so the these enzymatic barrier are a complex set of enzymes that degrade various compounds that can be harmful to the neurons of the brain for example you have acetylcholine esterase and monoamine oxidase then you have efflux transporters in the membrane of endothelial cells of the blood brain barrier so these are large number of efflux transporters example abc and atp binding cassette transporters these transporters throw out the harmful compounds which have already entered inside the endothelial cells so that they could not harm the neurons inside the brain now coming on to the carrier function of the blood brain barrier so the supply of all the nutrients to the brain happens via the blood brain barrier for example glucose and amino acids enter the brain and they require specific transporter proteins like GLUT1, GLUT2, GLUT3, GLUT4 for transportation of the glucose inside the brain interstitium then the lipid molecules which are there in the blood they can diffuse freely inside the interstitium of the brain even oxygen and carbon dioxide can also diffuse passively inside the interstitium of the brain and the blood brain barrier also plays a function of removal of metabolites of various processes which happen inside the brain so next what are the various locations of the blood brain barrier or what are the various interfaces where the blood brain barrier operates so first in the brain parenchyma or in the brain interstitium we have the blood brain barrier with endothelium parasites and astrocyte foot processes then we have in the brain ventricles we have blood csf barrier with the choroid plexus endothelium and in the brain venous sinuses we have the arachnoid endothelium which is separating the blood from the subarachnoid csf So in this diagram we can see the various cellular elements of the blood brain barrier. This is the endothelial cells 
and these endothelial cells are bound by tight junctions so these tight junctions uh, play a very important role in maintaining the blood brain barrier then we have the astrocyte foot processes so these astrocyte foot processes encase the capillaries and up to 95 percent of the area is actually covered by astrocyte foot processes then we have the parasites so these are the parasites they have contractile smooth muscle like elements so all these cells play an important role in maintaining the blood brain barrier and they form the part of the neurovascular unit so the endothelium of the blood brain barrier has three specific structural features first one is the tight intracellular junctions without fenestrations then they have less pinocytic intracellular vesicles which results in a relative lack of the vesicular transport then they have abundant mitochondria now coming on to the parasites so these parasites reside adjacent to the capillaries they have smooth muscle like properties and they control the cerebral blood flow by regulation of the capillary diameter through actin then we have astroglial processes or the astrocyte end feet which ensheath more than 95% of the vessel surface. Here are a few important points related to the development of the blood brain barrier. Uh, an early feature of blood brain barrier development is the formation of the tight junctions. So the proteins required for the formation of these tight junctions are occludin and claudin 5. So these proteins are seen in the brain of a 14 week fetus so these proteins are expressed at that age itself which shows that tight junctions are formed by 14 weeks in human postmortem studies of perinatal deaths and stillborn fetuses they have demonstrated that a barrier to trepan blue exists from at least the beginning of the second trimester the blood brain barrier matures during the fetal life and is well formed by birth. Next, continuing with the molecular anatomy of the blood brain barrier. So, what are the various transmembrane proteins which are responsible for establishing the tight junctions between the endothelial cells? So, as we discussed in the previous slides, we have occludins and Claudins. So these are the main proteins. Then we have junctional adhesion molecule 1 and then we have cytoplasmic accessory proteins that is zonula occludens and cingulin. So these are few proteins which are required for the formation of the tight junctions in the blood brain barrier. What are the various means by which different molecules cross the blood brain barrier? So we have around six different ways by which these molecules cross the blood brain barrier and it varies from molecule to molecule so first one is the diffusion by which very small molecules like gases uh, cross through the cell and enter inside the brain and then we have paracellular transport whereby uh, smaller solutes can go via the tight junctions uh, across the cell then we have transport protein mediated transport so this is a transport protein it will uh, bind to a specific sub substance or molecule then that transport protein will transport that particular molecule inside the brain then we have receptor mediated transcytosis so a particular substance will bind to the receptor and then it will be transported across the cell inside the brain then we have adsorptive transcytosis the the substance or the molecule will be adsorbed and then it will be transported inside the brain and then we have a way by which some noxious or uh, harmful substances which get get inside the cell can be thrown outside by the cell so this particular process is called as efflux so these are the various ways by which molecules move across the blood brain barrier so you can pause the video and go through this chart and see which molecule uses what mode of transport to pass across the blood brain barrier so many of these uh, things can be asked in mcq questions
so the diffusion of polar solutes happens through the tight junctions and it is called as the paracellular pathway the transport of gases is usually uh, they are permeable so oxygen carbon dioxide gases like helium xenon and many of the anesthesia agents gaseous anesthesia agents so they can easily uh, pass through the blood brain barrier because they are permeable then uh, the lipids also since they are soluble and they can diffuse through the blood brain barrier and the water is also permeable but the water amount of water entering the blood brain barrier is regulated by the aquaporins so which aquaporin is found where is usually tested in mcq so aquaporin 1 is detected on the epithelial cells of the choroid plexus whereas aquaporin 4 5 and 9 are localized on the astrocytes and the ependymal cells next we'll be discussing about the transport of glucose and amino acids across the blood brain barrier so the endothelial cells of the brain uh, astrocytes and the choroid plex cells they express a uh, insulin de independent glucose transporter that is GLUT1 so GLUT1 plays a vital role in the brain glucose uptake and is highly expressed in the cells forming the blood tissue barriers and in astrocytes another important aspect is the brain protection against the neuroactive substances such as aspartate and glutamate so these are the amino acids which are neuroactive so the blood brain barrier is largely impermeable to these amino acids now talking about transport of various macromolecules example proteins and peptides so the most amino acids are neutral and large so thus they are incapable of passive diffusion to the brain so what by what process they will pass inside the brain so endocytic vesicles account for the main delivery of the large molecule weight substances such as proteins and peptides through the blood brain barrier the plasma proteins such as albumin prothrombin and plasminogen are damaging to the nervous tissue and they can cause cellular activation which can lead to apoptosis so they are usually not transported inside the brain they always remain in the plasma only in the disease state will you see the proteins rising in your csf so that's how it is an indicator of a disease process so how does the blood brain barrier protect the neurons and the brain from the neurotransmitters which are circulating in the blood plasma the blood plasma contains very high level of neuroexcitatory amino acids like glutamate glutamate if released inside the brain can cause neurotoxicity and neuroexcitatory damage can happen to the neural tissue so blood brain barrier also keeps the central and peripheral transmitter pools of the neurotransmitters separate so that there is minimal crosstalk between the two set of neurotransmitters so how does the blood brain barrier protects us from neurotoxins so many neurotoxins can be endogenous metabolites or they can be exogenous proteins or xenobiotics which are ingested with food uh, there are a number of efflux transporters like ABC energy dependent efflux transporters which can throw out these neurotoxin outside the endothelial cells or outside the neurons. So other example is ATP binding cassette transporter which can actively pump many of these agents out of the brain. Next talking about the ion regulation. So there is a combination of specific ion channels and transporters which keeps the ionic composition optimal for the synaptic signaling function. The concentration of potassium in mammalian plasma is approximately 4.5 millimoles but in CSF and brain interstitial fluid the concentration of potassium is in the range of 2.5 to 2.9 millimoles in spite of the changes that occur in the plasma. So, this is maintained by specific ion channels even calcium magnesium and the ph are also actively regulated in the blood brain barrier and blood csf barrier next what are circumventricular organs so these are the areas of the brain where blood brain barrier is weak so these leaky regions are isolated from the rest of the brain by specialized ependymal cells which are called as tenocytes 
along the ventricular surface close to the midline so that's where the tenocytes are found so what are various circumventricular organs so these are classified into two types they are our sensory circumventricular organs and secretory circumventricular organs so for purpose of the exams sensory circumventricular organs are very important and you should know the name of all uh, circumventricular organs we have area postrema vascular organ of the lamina terminalis and then we have subfornical organ so these three organs are the sensory circumventricular organ then we have secretory circumventricular organ from which certain hormones or substances are secreted and they need to come to the blood circulation so that's why they are here the blood brain barrier is leaky so they are posterior pituitary gland pineal gland median eminence and then subcommissural organ